Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Ask me anything number 29. This is a 10 question Q&A video in a series of Q&As going back many years. Link in the playlist down below if you would like to see many more of these. These are meant to be rapid fire answers to many questions you ask. There are more expanded detailed questions answered over on our secondary YouTube channel, Bite Size Tech, that is also linked down in the video description below. Without any further ado, let's get straight into it. Question number one comes from Carol Pick, and Carol asks, I just bought a 12 gigabyte RTX 3060, very nice. That is an upgrade from a GTX 970. That is a very nice upgrade. I have 32 gigabytes of RAM and a Ryzen 5 1600 CPU. My question is, is that CPU enough to get the most out of the new graphics? Otherwise, which one would do without breaking the bank? Thanks. That is a great question, but it is not enough information to give a really solid answer. As our friend of the channel follows up and asks, how many screens do you use? What resolutions are they? And what type of games do you play? And what frame per second do you want? Well, I'm glad to say that he answered that question because then I can give a decent answer. Folks, when you ask tech questions, you've got to include lots of details. Otherwise, any answer you get is just generic and random and may not actually apply to you. So Carol says, I have three 1080p screens and one 900p. That's an old one. I've been thinking on replacing that last one for a 1440p. I don't really play AAA games or competitive stuff, so 60 frames per second is fine with me. Well, this is an easy answer to question. Ryzen 7 5700X is right up your alley. At the time I'm recording this video, $175. Update your BIOS. It's a drop in replacement into your existing board. Even if you have an old B350, it should work just fine. It's a 65 watt TDP chip, not an issue for cooling. You should be able to keep your current cooling. The 5700X is more than double the single core and more than double the multi-core performance. That will breathe new life into your PC. Buy Windows 10 Professional for $15, activate instantly online with Microsoft, and keep it forever. Don't pay full price. Get the best deal from our sponsor, URCD Keys, using our link in the video description below. Full details on how this amazing deal works at the end of the video. Our next question comes from another friend of the channel and a fellow YouTube content creator and a longtime technical writer, Dr. Ian Cutris. Check out his YouTube channel, Tech Tech Potato, if you'd like to see more of him. He asks, video editing workstation, would you rather use an 800 gigabyte Optane drive as a A, boot drive, or B, a proxy file drive? And if you have access to a two terabyte PCI Express Gen 4 drive, which should be boot and which should be proxy? It really does not matter. Uh, we've used SATA drives, NVMe drives, we've edited over the network. If you have enough raw transfer performance and reasonable random performance for seeking through files, it doesn't make a big difference. Boot drive, there's no reason to use an Optane for a boot drive. You can, but the PCI Express Gen 4 is fine for that. For Scratch, if you're working with large numbers of video sources, like say four to six video sources or more within a single frame, the Optane may very well come in handy. But video files, while they're big, they're not that big and you're only working with a small piece of them at any one point in time. So it kind of doesn't matter. Our next question comes from Mark Philip Rini, and he's from the UK, which is why he's asking this question. I know each state has different sales tax, but why do they not appear on the price you see on the shelves? How does sales tax work with online ordering? In most of the world, what you see is what you pay at the till, unless it's a B2B business to business transaction, then sales tax is handed differently. Well, the United States likes to do its own thing. We still use freedom units. None of that metric nonsense. We like our feet and inches and gallons, nice and complicated. That way nobody knows what we're doing. So we do not put sales tax into the price of the product in general. There are exceptions, gasoline is one of them, but in general, we don't. Taxes are different from state to state and city to city. Every state has their own sales tax rate. Some states have no sales tax, there are six of them. And then I live in Texas, we have three different sales tax rate. It could be six and a quarter, seven and a quarter, or eight and a quarter percent, depending on where you are and what you're buying. Yeah complicated. Now, businesses know all this up front generally, so they should be able to compute it generally, but we don't because we're different. We could. We just, that's just not how things are done here. Our next question is about BIOSes. Again, Mark asks, 
How do you work out what BIOS version your PC is running and how do you update it if it's out of date? This is a great question. First, we have a dedicated how to update your BIOS video on our channel. Click the channel name, click search, type in BIOS, you'll find it right at the top of the list. The easiest way to find out the name of your BIOS is to use a utility program called CPU-Z. Type in CPU-Z into Google, you will find it just fine. It is a wonderful free tool that tells you the motherboard make and model, the BIOS version, your RAM speed, how fast your RAM is running, your CPU clock speed, the voltage it's running at, and a bunch of other details. It even has a built-in benchmark. How to update your BIOS is way more complicated and unfortunately outside the scope of a Q&A, but the TLDR is watch our how to update your BIOS video because that'll explain it. Our next question is from Vagalus, and Vagalus asks a great question that tons of people want the answer to, and this probably deserves its own video. Comment down below if you agree. Would you agree that a 4070 is a better deal than a 4090, since in two years a 4090 will lose $700 of value, while the 4070 will only lose $300? That is a reasonable stance to take. Now, we could argue about whether the 700 and 300 numbers you propose are accurate, but even if I disagree, I wouldn't disagree by much. Maybe it's 600, maybe it's 800. You might be off by 100 either way, but you've got the general correct idea. You can apply that to most GPUs. However, let me offer a counterpoint. If you buy a 4090 today, you could potentially just skip the, the 50 generation and keep it for four years. Now, not at 4K, ultra everything, ray tracing on, but you'll be able to run 1440p very, very well. A 4070 will not. With a 4070, you have got to buy the video card every generation, 5070, 6070, 7070, etc. And the process of selling your card, buying the next one, selling it, swapping it out, opening up your computer, well, that's kind of a big fat pain in the neck. You might save a little bit of money, but if you go the 4090 route while you pay more, on a per year basis, you don't necessarily lose more money or you don't lose a lot more money, maybe a little bit, but you get spectacular run everything without caring for the first two years and reasonably decent performance for the second two years. It's a little bit of convenience and a little bit of premium for honestly not that much more money if you take it from that point of view, but you might disagree and that's okay. Our next question comes from, I'm just gonna call you Mr. P because I'm not gonna try to pronounce that. I'm on a budget and at the time I am running a i3-9100F. That is a four core, four thread, ninth generation CPU and an RX 570 four gigabyte card. Great in its day, not so much today. Right now with my money, I can go for a very good option. Upgrading both the CPU and GPU, he can get an i5-9600K and an RX Vega 56. Those are both definitely upgrades. Both are used and cheap and that Vega 56 was never used to mine. We won't talk about that last bit there, we don't have the time. What I will say is this, an RX Vega 56 is a solid, wonderful upgrade over an RX 570 four gigabyte card. You're getting twice the VRAM, Maybe not twice the performance, but you're getting more than 50% performance jump. That Vega 56 is definitely a real step up in performance over a 570. Yes, all day long, if you're budget constrained, wonderful. The i5 I'm less excited about. The problem with the i5 is that you're going from four cores, four threads to six cores, six threads. Eh, it's nice, it's an upgrade, it's not a massive one. Shop around and see if you can find an i7-8700K, which is six cores, 12 threads. It may be a generation back, but it should work on your board and it doubles your thread count to 12 over six. If you can't do that, look for a 9900K and see if you can't go that route, that'll give you 816. The i5-9600K is an improvement, it's just not a very exciting one and it frankly is already at the end of its useful life for modern games as well. But if it's what you can afford, go for it. Our next question comes from Ramblin' Man, like the name. I would love some advice from you, sir. I've been considering maxing out my current build to a Ryzen 9 5950X. I currently have a 5900X, an MSI 6800 XT Gaming X Trio, a very nice X570 motherboard and 64 gigs of RAM. Great machine. Why didn't you buy a 5950X to begin with? Okay, moving on. I don't need to play the latest and greatest single player RPG games. However, I do edit videos in DaVinci Resolve. I heavy stream with a lot of background tasks running such Steam Deck, Altium, Spotify, etc. My question is at the current price on Newegg, because that's the only place I buy from, would it be justifiable to buy at this price point or should I just stick with my current build and wait for AM5, etc.? Well, AM5 is already out. You don't have to wait for it. 
Here's the problem. At the current prices, you're gonna spend about $250 in transactional cost between buying the new chip and selling your old chip just to go from 12 cores to 16 cores at the identical per core per clock speed performance. It's a very meh upgrade. If you hadn't already bought a 5950X, yeah, that chip sailed. Honestly, you're the person who should have bought one to begin with, but I don't know your circumstances at the time, so fair enough. You edit videos in DaVinci Resolve and using your words, heavy stream with a lot of background tasks. Seriously, i9-13900K or Ryzen 9 7950X, perhaps the 3D chip. It's a lot of money and you may not be wanting to replace your platform, you're the person who should be doing so. Of all of our viewers, of all the people who should go out and replace a 5900X with a completely new platform, your use case is it. Otherwise, keep your current machine for another year, wait for the next refresh of everything, and then do a full replacement then. Our next question comes from Brian, and Brian asks, when do I think we will see 21.9 ultra-wide 4K gaming displays, i.e. 5120 by 2160 at 120 hertz? Seems like a 4090 would handle it. Well, we already have half of that. Those monitors already exist. 5120 by 2160 exists, but not at 120 hertz. The fastest I've seen is in the 72 to 85 hertz range, but I think we'll have 120 hertz monitors in the next year. 4090, yeah, but here's the thing. Even if a 4090 handles it, this is to everybody watching. If you buy a premium top of the line, high resolution, high refresh rate monitor, you're pretty much committed to buying the top of the line video card every video card release. 4090, check. 5090, check. 6090, check. You don't even have to think about it. You're just gonna have to do it. That's the price you pay when you buy a super high-end premium monitors. Odyssey G9 monitor owners, understand exactly what I'm talking about. So keep that in mind before you go and buy a super premium monitor, but they'll probably be here in a year or two. Our next question comes from Gordon DeWitt. There's a name. I found your channel when trying to figure out which 1060 to buy. Thank you for being a long time viewer. I appreciate that. Do you think your attitude towards creating videos, YouTube, your fans, and all of it has changed since those times? 1000%. Parts of it I love more, parts of it I love less. Answering trollish questions from people who wanna argue with me is a waste of time and I really should have done less of that. I actually like my old filming setup better and I kinda of miss it. I've got much more space now and a much fancier setup and frankly, it's less cozy. I wish that could change. There is content that I did years ago because of my setup that I don't do now and content I do now I didn't do years ago. And I really kind of want to change the whole thing again, but changing your filming setup is a major endeavor and it runs the risk of kind of messing with your mojo, but that's certainly a thing. As far as the fans go, it's interesting to see people come and go over time. I've gotten a lot of comments lately from people who say, man, I haven't watched your videos in like a year or two. Where have you been? To which I say, thank you. Welcome back. Click our channel name. There's like 2000 videos on the channel. You'll be busy for a while. I find it fascinating how few people actually click on YouTube channel names and just see what's been published lately. Maybe that's just me. In any case, thank you so much for being a longtime fan. Our next question comes from Lewis. A car question, oh boy. Many companies are getting into the electric car business these days. Side note, for those of you who don't know, I own an EV, a Ford Mach-E. It is lovely, and yes, it's a Mustang. Drive one before you claim it isn't. But Toyota is playing it safe by betting on more combustion efficient engines and hydrogen cars in the future. Are we looking into a kind of Mac versus PC showdown in the automobile industry for the coming years? No, we're going full electric. It's as simple as that. The government wants us to go full electric. The supercharger infrastructure is there. Tesla is outselling everybody else combined. Ford is starting to make an impact. GM is kind of getting their EV market off. Toyota is off there doing their own thing with their hydrogen cars and no one wants to play. If you actually look into the infrastructure required to deploy hydrogen, it's just, what is Toyota thinking? It's, that's just not going to happen. So I don't think it's going to be a Mac versus PC situation. I think Toyota is wasting their first mover advantage. The Toyota Prius came out more than a decade ago. That thing was really popular for a while and the Tesla's kind of replaced it. So... Toyota, what are you doing? You could have led straight into a whole line of EV cars right after the Prius, and instead you're messing with hydrogen? 
It's way too complicated. It requires changing every gas station in America and nobody wants to do it. So EVs for the win. Looking for a Windows 10 or 11 product key, but you don't want to spend $100 to $200 for it? Our sponsor, URCD Keys, provides discounted Windows keys at amazing prices. $15 for Windows 10 Professional, $21 for Windows 11 Professional, and just $60 for Microsoft Office 2021 Professional Plus. These product keys are the real deal. They activate directly with Microsoft Online, link to your Microsoft account, and they work forever. For Windows, you simply go to Settings, Update and Security, Activation, click Change Product Key, paste the key provided by URCD Keys, and in seconds, you're activated with Microsoft. For Office, go to setup.office.com, sign in with your Microsoft account, paste the product key provided by URCD Keys, and then download Office 2021 Pro Plus directly from Microsoft. Remember to use the discount code TD20 to save 25% off the already deeply discounted prices and support our channel at the same time. We have been using product keys from URCD Keys for almost five years now without any issues and encourage you to do so as well. Thank you all so much for watching to the end of this video. Two gold stars for all of you for still being here. Like, comment, subscribe, do all the YouTube things. Check out the links down in the video description below over to Bite Size Tech. If you like this kind of format but wish I could take more time per question, five, 10 minutes per question, then you'll wanna check out our sister channel, Bite Size Tech. I've got a ton of content. We've got, what, three, 400 videos over there? Yeah, so please go check that out. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll have another one of these in a couple of weeks.